Hello there, it's Austin. So, can you brew and drink beer in space? If you were in some sort of artificial localized environment, like a spaceship or a space station, would it be possible to have a small brewery set up and produce your own beer to drink in space? There are certainly some problems that we have to work through before an astronaut can crack open a cold one on the International Space Station. The first problem we run into is with our yeast. Yeast can face a lot of stress when you take it from our nice, shielded atmosphere with a consistent gravitational pull, and there's actually a little bit of research already done on this topic. NASA conducted a biological assessment of yeast and how it performed in low Earth orbit, compared to a control sample of yeast that was down here on Earth. Unfortunately, what they found is the yeast suffered a significantly decreased rate of survival compared to their control yeast. This is likely due to the increased amount of radiation experienced in low orbit, which means the higher exposure to beta particles and low energy protons can lead to significant cell death. So, how do we counter this? The simplest way would be designing a fermenter with improved shielding for the yeast. While we're at it, if we attach the shielding to a frame that can spin, we can keep our yeast under a little bit more familiar gravitational forces. It is worth noting that to reach centrifugal forces that match the acceleration we see on the Earth's surface, with such a small rotational diameter, we would need angular velocities that are reaching up into the 40 revolutions per minute, which can be kind of dangerous in a confined area like a space station. But also, brewers have been working with yeast under different types of fermentation stress for thousands of years. I don't think it's too far of a stretch to imagine there might be a yeast strain that can handle the pressures of low Earth orbit. The second main problem we face when trying to brew a batch of beer in space is that it's really expensive. Right now it costs between five and $25,000 per pound to get things up into orbit. Even if that price per pound goes way down, it's worth looking at our ingredients and our equipment because honestly, it's not really a priority. The third main issue with brewing in space is that it's really hard to drink carbonated beverages. In 1985, NASA brought some carbonated beverages into space and had their astronauts drink them, and it caused some issues. Mainly in low gravity, carbonation doesn't escape liquids as well, so when you drink it, it stays in your stomach. Then your stomach starts to swell and it's uncomfortable and you can't really burp, there's just a lot of problems. But there are actually some companies like Vostok that have been working on some degas and reduced gas containers. Between that and brewing a special reduced carbonation style beer, it starts to look a little more feasible. In fact, I believe they successfully had the first commercial beer drank out of one of those bottles a few years ago. Special containers and special beers aside, it would definitely be more enjoyable to drink beer under good old-fashioned gravity. And in that case, even though we're leaving the scope of brewing a little bit, there's a couple options for creating artificial gravity in space. Potentially a centrifuge-style artificial gravity device that wraps around the ship, or for really long journeys, accelerating your ship at gravity speeds, flipping it around and decelerating at gravity speeds, gives you essentially two zones of your trip that you have more home-like gravity. I don't know if it would make sense to drink beer during those times, but that's what I would be doing. So if we've convinced NASA to let us brew in space, and we have some combination of solutions to the problems we outlined, what kind of beer do we brew and how do we brew it? Looking at our ingredients list, we'll start with water. With current water processing technology, the Water Processor Assembly, or WPA system, on the International Space Station, aims for a recovery rate of right around 98%. And even though it might be recycled waste, it's probably purer than most tap water that we drink here at home. Moving on to our malt, hops, and yeast. We could take a more simplistic kit of dry malt extract, hop extract, and dry yeast, or we could take our grains, hops, and actual yeast. Unfortunately, even though I prefer the all grain method myself, the amount of equipment and energy required to mill, mash, boil, and cool an all grain batch is exponentially more than putting together a DME kit and letting it ferment out. When you look at the breakdown of cost, it's not even comparable when we're talking cost per drink or even per batch. A big part of the cost differential for the style batch is the needed equipment, which is pretty much just a fermenter with an included pressure relief valve and maybe a stainless mesh system to help the floating fermenting wort stay out of that valve. Moving on to the cooling and serving system. Right now there are freezer and refrigerator devices that work in space, which just leaves transferring to a bag or specialized bottle and then enjoying. In conclusion, with a few challenges in consideration, you can make beer in space with the technology that we have available today. You would likely have to brew a relatively low carbonation beer relying on DME, extracts, and a non-heat adding kit brewing process. The fermentation would need to be shielded or use some sort of modified yeast strain. Finally, you'd need to drink them sparingly through a filter, a bag, or a specialized wick style bottle. Or again, if you had a ship-wide artificial gravity situation, then that would help out too. Cheers.